Good afternoon, I am Mr. Is. You are joining me for this video here. Additional Venn diagram concepts are presented here but in a very practical and logical manner because my purpose is to teach you how to do questions using Venn diagrams. Not that when you're actually doing these questions you start worrying about terminology and theory behind it because then you're essentially stressing yourself out. On a standardized exam you have a minimal amount of time to do each question. You want to get right into it and you want to do it right. So we'll look at two questions in here and we will do them in a practical and logical manner. The type of way that I would want you to do it. First question, from 25 people in total, they all like either soda or milkshakes. 15 happen to like soda and 6 like both soda and milkshakes. How many like their milkshakes? Not too hard. Start over here with a universal set. And you can represent that as a rectangle and you know your total here is 25 people who all like either soda or milkshakes. And there's nothing mentioned about people who don't like any of these, so you know that value right there is zero. So everyone within this 25 either falls in these two categories, one of which is soda, S for soda, and the other one is milkshakes, M for that. And we happen to know six like both soda and shakes, so that represents a number right here in the intersection of these two, because they happen to like both soda and milkshakes. We know from here 15 like the soda, this entire bubble which represents the soda, 15 of those like soda, but 6 of those happen to like milkshakes as well, so 15 minus 6, that gives you that 9, who only like the soda. Because out of these 15, 9 only like the soda, but 6 of those happen to like milkshakes as well. So what do we have left over here? We have 25 minus these 15, minus the 0 who don't apply because there are no values or no people in that category. We're left with a total of 10 over here, who happen to like milkshakes, and you can very well bring that number right over here. And that right there answers your question, how many like shakes? But it doesn't answer it properly in the sense because you've only filled this. When it's asking you how many like shakes, you have to take that in a general sense. How many people like shakes out of this 25? It must be the cumulative number of everyone in this bubble. It would be 10 plus 6, which would be 16. It just happens to be the case that out of these 16, 6 also like sodas. But out of these 16, 10 only like milkshakes. So when the question is asking you how many like milkshakes, your answer is 16 not 10 because 16 like happen to like milkshakes either singularly or in duality with sodas and how can you express that answer here in a proportion or a probability you can do 16 out of 25 and that could be a good answer right over here as well let's look at the second and last question of this video and again we will endeavor to do this in a practical manner easy and practical manner we have 112 shoppers 43 of whom bought popcorn and 57 who bought candy. But there are 38 shoppers who bought neither popcorn nor candy. How many bought both the popcorn and the candy? How do we go about doing this? Again, we know we're dealing with two subsets which happens to be P for popcorn and C for candy. And we have to determine how many bought both which is we're looking right here at this intersection because these are the people who bought popcorn and they bought candy. A good fact we have over here is there are 112 total, that's your universal set. And this right here, 38 bought neither, which means these 38 are outside the union of these two sets. So we can bring 38 out over here. If you did this 112 minus 38, 112 minus 38 will tell you the number of people who bought something. Whether it was popcorn or whether it was candy, but these are 74 people who bought something. But we're seeing over here that 57 bought candy. And we're seeing that 43 bought popcorn. If you do 43 plus 57, that gives you a number higher than that. It's 43 plus 57, you get 100. What does that tell you? That there's some double counting going on here because out of these 100, there's some who bought both. If you did 100 minus 74, you will get a good number and that number will be 26. That 26 will represent the people who double purchased, which means they bought both popcorn and candy and this number here can be 26. Let's put this number over here. Now let's break everything down. We know 43 bought popcorn, but out of those 43, 26 also bought candy. You do 43 minus 26 and that gives you 17 people who bought popcorn only. But this 17 and this 26 will give you a total of 43 who bought popcorn. Some of it who bought only popcorn only and some who bought popcorn and candy. Let's look here at this 57 candy. 57 bought candy minus this 26 which is your intersection point and that gives you 31 over here. This 31 plus this 26 will give you that 57. This 17 plus this 26 will give you that 43. 
So what do we say over here with regards to our probability? Our probability, if you were to randomly select one person or these 112, the probability that that person bought both items is 26 over 112, which would you could be simplifying it to 13 over 56. As a final conclusion to this question right here, let's break everything down. 112 total, 38 bought neither, 43 bought popcorn. See, 17 plus this 26 is 43. Of those 43, 17 only bought popcorn and the remainder bought, which were 26, also bought candy. Of these 57 who bought candy, 31 bought only candy, but 26 bought both popcorn and candy. Hence, we have a pretty large intersection point over here. Of course, this is not drawn to scale. In this instance, the intersection point would be pretty large and overlapping. And we'll end the video with that statement over there. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Have a nice day.